This is how to upgrade your master cylinder on a BMW S1000RR. A long time ago, I got rid of the Nissan stock master cylinder on this 2010 S1K. And I went with an RCS19, which did really well for a long time. At the time, I also upgraded to monoblock calipers and new floating rotors. Now that I'm kind of getting to the limits of the RCS19, I'm upgrading to a Brembo CNC Racing 19 by 20 master cylinder. It's not that there's anything wrong with the RCS19. It does what is expected of it, but now that I'm doing more harder braking on a track and in the mountains coming into turns, I need something that's going to be more consistent in braking power because I have to trust these 100%. The first thing to do is to get a decent rag tucked in around the parts you're gonna be changing because the last thing you need is brake fluid spilled on your bike, your paint or any other finishes. The next thing to do is take a piece of tape however you need to do it, somehow mark where the master cylinder is as far as how far up and down the bar and also where the split between the two halves of the case goes because you wanna be able to put the new one as close as you can to the exact same place. It'll save you screwing around with adjustments later. That's of course assuming that it's similar, so you may have to measure this compared to the original cylinder. In this case, I'm going Brembo to Brembo, so I expect it'll be very similar. So I'm just gonna take a piece of tape here, and then I'm gonna mark that piece of tape right where the split is. So there's the piece of tape, and then that little ink mark lines up with the splits in the master cylinder. So the first thing I'm gonna do is crack loose the master cylinder bolt that connects the banjo fitting of the brake line to the master cylinder. All right, now it's starting to weep. I don't want it very loose. I just want to make sure I get the grunting done while it's still attached here. And now I'll take these two bolts loose on the master cylinder to pull it off. All right, now you've got two bolts right here to hold the front part of the clamp to the actual master cylinder. So I'm gonna loosen the bottom one first a little bit because it's the last one you tighten, but only a little bit, and then go back to the other and go back and forth now you notice I'm not breaking loose the line that goes from the reservoir to the master cylinder yet. Because if I do that, all I'm doing is asking for a mess. It's better to pull it off and contain it versus just take it loose and then have it spill all over. Okay, now I'm gonna pull that bolt out and you'll notice there's a washer that goes between the bracket and the bracket for the reservoir on that top one. Now, I know it's gonna drip and that's okay, but I'm gonna slowly get this banjo bolt out and then the master cylinder will come out with the reservoir. Okay, we've got a little drip. Let's get that guy out. Don't lose that washer there. And now this assembly can come out. And looking at your new master cylinder, what you want to see is that you've got a bolt, banjo bolt, and two crush washers. You can reuse the old bolt, but do not reuse the old crush washers. Those need to be new. Some kits may come with a double banjo for a stacked setup. If that's how your brakes are set up, then go ahead and use that. Just pay attention and make sure that you use whatever bolt was in there before, whether it's a stack or just a single. I'm gonna reuse the black bolt that I had in there before. So you basically put one crush washer on it, and then you put it up through the banjo fitting, and then you put the second crush washer on it, and then you start gently threading that into the bottom of the master cylinder. We're trying to get things in place right now. We're gonna take this half of the clamp off now. There's one bolt, two bolts. Now what you'll notice, at least for Brembo's, is most of them will have an arrow or some marking to show where the top is. 
that is important. You wanna make sure that it's facing up or the B, the top of the logo is up or whatever, because that affects how the interface is between here and the master cylinder. Put the two halves together and start the bottom bolt. It'll be easier with a wrench, a little bit more control of your angles, but it's gonna hold its place, which is important because the next thing we wanna do is put the top bolt in and to put the top bolt in, you need to have that bracket first. Now to get the reservoir loose, we've got the bracket and that may have to change locations a little bit, but basically it goes in the same place. And then what we wanna do is get a pair of needle nose and pinch that fitting to pull the tubing off and put on the new one. Now, obviously if we take it loose right there, we'd have fluid all over the place. So what we'll do is pour the fluid out first and then that way we don't have such a mess when we take this loose. Now this one just takes a screwdriver and a couple of spots to get that loose. Pull those screws out, pull the cap off, pull the gasket out, and then I'm just gonna pour this into the little cup. So always make sure that your cup doesn't have holes in it before you put fluids in it. Now we just wanna take a pair of needle nose and squeeze that little clamp up. There we go. Then we'll take our tubing off. There we go. The tubing for the reservoir goes on this fitting right there. So we're gonna put this on here, easy enough. Now we just have to get our little clamp back down. The first thing I wanna do is make sure that that's gonna fit here first. It's a little bit different angle, but it should work. Always trim that tubing if we need to. Now, when we come down with this clamp, I'm gonna get it down and over, there we go, where it was before. Now, we just have to attach that in there. So we'll take our top screw, put it through there, and get the thread started here. Oops. And what may be happening, yeah. So unfortunately, even though the last clamp worked well, this one does not. It wouldn't fit on this one, so I had to kind of grind the edges around down here to make it fit. That's just some of the fun you get to have working on motorcycles. All right, now that we have this fitting, again, we have the arrow up, put that there with the screw in place. I'm gonna take this, aligned, now, since there's really not a shoulder on this new bolt, I'm going to use a washer underneath there. I don't want to use two because I don't want to affect how many threads are engaged in the master cylinder when I put these two together. All right, now that the bracket actually fits on that side of the clamp, I'm going to reinsert the tubing clamp for the reservoir. I'm going to move that hose clamp down in place. You got to get it over the fat part. There we go. And you can see it kind of extend up where it widens above the clamp. You want that clamp below the fat part of that nozzle. Now you can see this thing is already kind of not happy. So I'm gonna have to bend this a little bit once I get everything tight, reposition it. Let's get the master cylinder on correctly first and then I can finish with that. All right, so we've got both clamp bolts started. I'm gonna take the screws back out of my, because I'm gonna need to fill that up at some point here. And until I get it all figured out around that windscreen, it might be awkward doing that. The lid's off my reservoir. And I've got that loose, that loose, and the 
bolt down here. So now what I'm going to do is get the clamp and everything correct with how it was before where I'm lining up that mark on the blue tape you remember from earlier and it says 10 newton meters max. You want the top one tightened first because what you're going to do is bring that to a close and then you're going to pick up whatever gap and float the difference on the bottom one. So again I'm going to check my tape, make sure that gap is set, and now they're both pretty snug so I'm just going to keep tightening the top one. The gap is closed up there, that one's getting tighter too. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this in until I see my 10 newton meters max. Okay so that's all snug. Part of it is that I think that tubing is a little bit too long now. Snake some off of that. In fact, I'm pretty sure I am because that's, you can see already that that thing has just got too much tubing. It needs to be sitting down closer to there. Let's take this back off again. Put, put there a little clamp north of where we want our cut. Now that we've got a shorter tubing, let's go ahead and slip this guy on there and let's get our clamp back down there. Now that looks like it's fitting a lot better. I'm going to make sure we're going to clear our fairing and everything eventually, but let's just get it functional right now. Now for the master cylinder banjo fitting, it wants 23 to 26 newton meters. And you always want to be sure you're not going to mess with cabling like the throttle control cables here or anything else. Of course my numbers are on the bottom so I'm going to have to get underneath it to look at it. Alright, 23 to 26. Alright, both of these screws that hold the clamp to the MC are tight. The bolt that holds the brake fitting to the master cylinder is tight. I don't see any cables that are clamped or pinched, so that's good. Next thing to do is to start to fill up the reservoir. This is what I've been advised to use for my spirited writing style. Now before I start pumping anything, I'm going to squeeze this tube, make sure it's facing up, and just squeeze it. You can see some little bubbles forming up in the reservoir. So I'm trying to squeeze the air out of the tubing, and then I'm just going to tap this guy a little bit just to see if there's any air I can knock up into the reservoir that way. And I see a few little bubbles showing up here. Anything you can do to remove air earlier in the process like this is going to be helpful. Again, we're just trying to get any air we can upward. If you go right for the gold and start shoving fluid down in your system, you're going to shove whatever air is in that system down with it. So getting the air out will make your bleeding experience faster. Now, just by doing this tapping and all the air I've gotten out of that line, the lever is already having pressure to it, which is great. So I think this is a more effective way to <laughs> to your initial startup. All right, so I'm going to squeeze one, two, three, four, five, and crack it just enough. Oh, there's fluid with some, it's a little bit of fizz in it. Boy, it's got good tension already though. If you think about it, the only air really would be just in the little section of tubing underneath that master cylinder. So you want to be careful. You don't want to push all that air down in the system. You want to try to scare it back up to the top. I'll try to get some of this t-shirt right up close here. So I'm not spilling on the rest of this stuff if I can avoid it. Don't let your reservoir run out of fluid or you're going to be pushing air down in there. Squeeze all the way in and make sure to tighten the valve before you ever start letting that lever out again. All right, so I've got everything bled out just up here. Now, 
I have not done the calipers yet. I've tried to keep the air contained up here. The safe thing to do is to go do the calipers next. And I'll put the link to the video below in the description that tells how to bleed your brakes. I'm not gonna go through that again because I've got a video that already goes all the way through that, including cycling of your ABS pumps with the GS911 tool. So what I'm gonna do now that this is all put together, I'm going to put a zip tie around the lever and hold it there overnight and then go ride it. And then once it's sort of settled in, then I'll go through and do a full brake bleed on it properly, like shown in the video in the description below. The only other thing I need to do is see if my previous lever will go in there. This is a Brembo lever and that's fine, but I'd already spent the money to get these TWMs that are low drag, which is important for the Texas mile. So I am going to put this over on here. Put your cap back on the reservoir. Once you have the fluid up to a decent level, don't forget your gasket under the lid. Over tighten them, just make sure everything's sealed well. Don't forget to put your rubber cap back on the bleeder valve. Get rid of that blue tape that I put in here to begin with. The last thing you want to do when you get all the assembly done is spray everything down with some simple green to get all the brake fluid off that you may have inadvertently got on the bike. And the reason for that is not only because that stuff is kind of nasty and corrosive, but you also want to see if you end up having any leaks. So you want to make sure everything's clean to start with and then after you go ride it and use it a little bit, you want to check down there for that banjo bolt and make sure that there's no fluid around there. It's not leaking. I swapped my Brembo lever that came with the master cylinder for my TWM low drag lever. I got my reservoir bracket adjusted properly so it's in a position where it's not hitting the fairing or the windscreen. Trying out this new master cylinder. As I'm growing in my riding and being able to come into turns hotter, I've got to really be able to trust these brakes. And this racing CNC Brembo 19 by 20 is just a night and day difference. It's got so much more bite, good consistent stopping power, good control with the master cylinder, the lever feels good. Ramp it up, squeeze it in, let it off. That's what I need for this kind of riding. You've got to be able to trust your machine, especially your brakes. So that's how you replace the front brake master cylinder on your BMW S1000RR. Subscribe to my YouTube channel below and let's celebrate turning fuel and air into adrenaline.